so you have your own sort of private park. Yeah. You yeah. wouldn't realize there's actually a house up here. Right. It's pretty hidden, but it does stand out. <laughs> and when we were building it, it really stood out. In fact, we had someone who called the building department and asked what government agency was building a facility on the Bay Road. <laughs> So they were thinking it was like... A military installation. <laughs> How did you even find the property? We used to live in Toledo, which is the next town east. I would often drive the Bay Road, and I've always wanted to build a house, and I've always wanted water. I actually happened to be the first person to drive by after the people who own this property put the sign out. We stood up at the top the view is just so phenomenal. And I said, whatever we have to do, we have to figure out how to build here. So we sold our place and moved on to a trailer on the land here. So we actually spent a year living on the land without doing anything, just kind of seeing where the sun was at different times of the year, kind of let the land dictate yeah. what we were gonna do. Finally, we decided to do a earth sheltered structure. How cold does it get here? Uh, it's fairly moderate. We have had freezes. Uh, we have had our water line freeze. Uh -huh. But enough that where you think about the earth as an insulator, as an issue? Well, that was a key factor, yeah. is uh, efficiency. The other thing is not only just efficiency, but also sturdiness, low maintenance and uh, comfort. So now we're on top of the house. Yeah. What's under us? <laughs> okay, well, this obviously is a chimney. So down uh, about, let's see, I don't know, 16 feet down is our wood stove. This is a cupola that's in the center of the house, looks down into the kitchen. You can... Yeah, you can see our dining room table. And then these arches on these three sides encompass the openings that we have on the south side, the west side, and the east side. So they're part of the retaining walls. It's basically each dimension is 24 feet across and 12 feet high. And it's all arched. So the structure was what to begin with? I found a company in Colorado that had a building system based on these arches. Most people would build into a hill and have one opening, and we wanted to have openings all around. So they said, well, draw up what you want and we'll engineer it for you. So we did the design with openings all around, and then they did the engineering, created the blueprints, and, and shipped out all the steel to us. We laid out the floor and the foundation. We actually got a whole bunch of highway signs and used those for the forms because it has a nice slippery surface. In fact, there's one section of the house where the letters came off. You can see the signage in reverse. And then we had kind of a big barn raising. The steel arches came in two pieces, so they're bolted in the middle because otherwise you couldn't ship something that big. And we had a bunch of people, ropes and pulleys, and we put up the initial steel I-beam cage. And then it was pretty much Jeff and I doing the rebar over a long period of time. <laughs> so lots of rebar tying. I forget how many tons of rebar it was, but it was a lot of rebar. <laughs> and that took us more than a year because we were doing it ourselves. And working at the same time. And working at the same time. So once we had all the rebar in place and then we put all the conduit through, then the forming was done with two layers of one inch foam on the inside of the structure. So doing two layers of one inch foam is flexible enough to follow a curve. And then they came in and sprayed the concrete kind of like a swimming pool in reverse. It's called shotcrete. We were in that stage for a long time because we couldn't afford the waterproofing <laughs> for a couple of years. The bank wouldn't loan us money. Nothing. No, it, it, which is interesting because, you know, we could have easily borrowed money to build a house out of paper and sticks, but to build a house that has a 900 year 
lifespan and can withstand a nuclear blast, you know, they're going like, huh, we can't loan you money on that. <laughs> Why? What was the <laughs> reasoning? It was just too unknown to them. So it was kind of paycheck to paycheck or we'd save up for the next batch of concrete. And then the waterproofing came in. So that's a layer of bentonite impregnated polyethylene sheet. There's a thousand tons of earth on top of our house. Why so much dirt? The weight of the earth, for one thing, actually adds strength to the structure. Oh. So it, when you think about like an egg and they say you can grab an egg and try to crush it and it doesn't break. Yeah. So because of the barrel vaulted structure, the weight of the earth kind of compacts it in and makes it stronger. So that's one aspect. Okay. But the main aspect is the thermal mass insulation value. I think everybody should be building houses like this. Yeah. I mean, th they're, they're low maintenance, they're super efficient, they're super strong. I mean, we're in the Cascadia earthquake zone. Yeah. So this house is designed to withstand an earthquake. I mean, when it, when, it's not if, but when it comes, you know, there's gonna be a lot of structures in Lincoln County that are destroyed. We may have broken windows, but our structure is gonna remain solid. So the front here, is just sort of an access portal. <laughs> right. We just recently built this. That was originally the exterior door. Ah, okay. So this is kind of an entrance arch, smaller than the other arches, so it kind of brings you into the house. And then, wow, it opens up. It feels almost medieval. You know, well, there's kind of that Gothic arch church yeah. kind of or underside of a ship. <laughs> What's the height to the oculus? To the so the so the the ceiling here is twelve feet, and then that's another what four or five feet, and then the earth comes just below the lower end of that. So there's about three feet of earth at the thinnest part okay. on top of the house. Right. It's funny because we'll talk to people who drive by. And the, the description that they use for our house is, you have the house, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Some people who build these structures, they encapsulate the steel I-beams, which I think is a really attractive aspect of it. It can be like historic, but also futuristic because it's also a shape that makes sense geometrically for a lot yeah. of reasons, right? Yeah. It's the arch is one of the oldest architectural strong points of building known to man, so. So from here, we can sort of see rebars underneath all this. Yeah, these yeah. steel uh, I-beams are actually encased halfway. So half of the I-beam is on the other side of the stucco. We wanted to, them to show and to kind of give definitions to the space. They're actually highlighting shapes in a yes. way, right? Yeah, and it's like, like where they come down in the middle is, I think is really beautiful. You know, just lying on the floor looking up is, is you know, you don't have that in a regular square house. It's always interesting, like, like this view, this view out to the east, you know, just sitting in the chair over here and just looking that way. So you've got all these arches and then the arched view and it's beautiful. Right, it's why people feel good in a church. It looks like some of those Tuscan or Florentine Renaissance churches that you see. So one of the cool aspects of this structure is that nothing on the interior is load bearing because the arch is the strength of the, of the structure. So uh, for example, this is our south wall. We could just tear this all out, which we probably will do at one point because when we built it, you know, we couldn't afford the nice glass we wanted. I found this sliding glass door on Craigslist for, you know, a couple hundred dollars. It's an old aluminum dual pane that's cloudy in the middle. So eventually we, we could take that out. We couldn't get a window to fit that profile. The glass, unless we wanted to pay it, you know, absorbent amount of money. But the glass company said, well, we can maybe cut it in half and do two, but we can't really go down to that sharp a point, and it would look weird. So 
I got a piece of twin wall polycarbonate for a couple hundred bucks and you know we made a template to cut that out and that still lets all the light in but without the expense. But that was all we could afford at the time, yeah. which is kind of why this is still almost a temporary wall. And often we just open it up, you know. We stood at the edge of this hill the first time we came to look at the property and it was like, we have to make this work. It's dynamic because that's a, that's a tidal marsh. And so it goes up and down twice a day. You know, you can sit here for hours and hours and hours and be happy. And in the wintertime, the storm, we get the storms from the south and these windows will all flex. <laughs> but the house doesn't move. Any house I've been in before, in a storm, you can kind of feel the house move. This doesn't move. There's, there's nothing that moves <laughs> in this house. You were talking about real storms, like yeah. 100 mile an hour winds. Yeah, 100 mile an hour winds. Serious stuff. Yeah, and we get those here. There's just so many shapes here. Yeah. Every time I move, I'm like, wow, there's another. <sighs> well, I, I will say one thing. I got really good at doing sheetrock to a curve, <laughs> you know, building to a curve. That's a, a challenge. How do you do that? I would measure like from a, a point and I would do a vertical line and measure every like six inches, then scribe that onto the sheetrock. But like I said, because these walls are not load bearing, mm. one of the things that we did again with how much time we had to build because you know we were doing paycheck to paycheck, this whole wall was originally designed differently. It was gonna be pretty much straight across. And then we thought, well, let's make a bigger pantry. So we brought this wall out and this is, this is our pantry as I've always wanted. A nice big pantry. pantry. Yeah. And then, you know, we wanted an open floor plan. We do a lot of entertaining and this is a great place for parties. We have our furniture on wheels so we can, you know, we want to have a dance party. We move the couch out of the way. And then we both love to cook. So a nice open kitchen that's easy for, you know, multiple people to, to work in. This was a fun project. Initially, we just had plywood countertops and just two by four shelving. In the process of building out, we would splurge on certain things and be very economical on other things. But we saved up. I did a concrete countertop. So this is all one monolithic pour. So it's a pour in place countertop. So you did it all in one day? Or? Yeah, I had a little party, a concrete mixing party. That's been really nice because it doesn't, you know, you put hot pots on it and... The outcome is just... It's like stone. It yeah. feels like nice stone, actually. Yeah. It's not perfect. <laughs> Don't look too close. <laughs> yeah, but, that, but neither is stone, right? Yeah. So that makes it natural. For... It's organic. It's organic. Nature is not perfect, so yeah. I always wanted it, you know, this is great countertop height for parties, but when we want to have a sit down, I just... So you are using a tool. Yeah. I have a hand crank, but that takes a lot longer. So I got one of these sit-stand tables from Surplus for free. And then this tabletop came from the library because they surplus that. And I just put them together and... So what is this? He like you actually just put... In there, there's a crank in there and it, it winds down the base. That's just an it, electric... Scooter. It's a little cordless drill. <laughs> And you figured out that you could just attach that instead. Yeah, and, I had to yeah. make this little thing to fit the... <laughs> That's ingenious. And then I just go back up. Yeah. Because why hand crank when you can... <laughs> <laughs> but. Everything's so custom. Yeah. Everything. Speaking of custom, we got a really good wood stove because that's our own, basically our between the wood stove and the solar gain, that's our only source of heat. Um, well, it's not our only source, it's what we use. It's what we use. The yeah. county made us put in two bedroom wall heaters. 
<laughs> yeah, getting back to those codes, they say, oh, you have to have a heater in a bedroom. You don't, don't need it, probably. Yeah, we don't use them. When the sun shines in, especially the winter sun, because the way the supporting arch is built, there's actually a, over a two-foot overhang. So the, in the summer, the sun gets blocked from coming very far into the house. But in the winter, it'll come all the way through the house. And actually another interesting, in the morning, the sun will come through that window and go all the way out through the shower in our bedroom over there. So in winter, it's pretty set up then for, for heating it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's really not nice, very low energy bills. And... Yeah. If there's no sun? Then it doesn't matter. You know, when it's sunny, it's cold here, so it's perfect. And when it's cloudy, it warms up. So it's a couple of logs of wood at night, and that's it. The, the whole concept of thermal mass with this type of structure. So the concrete will absorb the heat from the fire or the sun. The concrete floor absorbs the heat, and then it radiates back. And the whole, you know, being earth sheltered, the temperature of the earth is like 55 degrees mm -hmm. or whatever. So you're never having to either go heat up very far or cool down. In a regular house, mm -hmm. you turn the heat off, the heat dissipates fairly quickly. It doesn't dissipate in this type of structure because it's being held in the concrete. And in the summertime, when we do get heat, because the earth is still 55 degrees, that radiates through, so it keeps the house cool. Uh -huh. So it's a kind of a win-win situation, which is, I, I don't understand why more people don't build houses like this. And the first time someone sleeps here, it's really interesting because you can kind of feel that it's almost womb-like because um, it, it's, not, it's not like an oppressive weight on you, but it's like an encompassing weight. Uh, and it's, this is a really wonderful place to sleep. <laughs> and it's very mm -hmm. quiet, mm -hmm. yes. This is the west side of the house, which is the master bedroom uh, suite. So we created the bed area. And then, you know, there's so much concrete and steel in this house, we had to add some wood. And speaking of wood, I, I, I forgot to mention, so all the framing of these interior walls are done from wood that we had milled from this home site. The people that we bought the land from, they had actually cut into the hill and created the site and they cut all the trees down and they just left them. And it was actually the very first thing we did when we moved onto the property is we hired a guy with a portable sawmill and had all those trees milled up to two by sixes, two by fours, four by fours. So I would say 90% of the wood in this house came from where we're standing. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so you added the interior walls later. Yeah, this actually was the last part of the house that we finished. We had finished the other side first because we wanted to get the kitchen in and mm -hmm. at least one bathroom mm. uh, so that we could finally move out of the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so how many years were you living in a trailer? What? Six, seven years. Not, not ideal. We didn't think it was going to take as long as it did, but because it was taking us so long, it gave us the time to really think about what do we want here, where do we want to light, which was especially important in a concrete structure. You put conduit through the concrete and it's where it is. And there was actually another benefit, which was we don't have a mortgage. That's a plus. <laughs> so um, we created a walk-in closet. This was another idea I had for a dresser to not fill into the space, ah. this actually goes <laughs> into the, the bathroom. So oh, yeah. That's the back end? So that's end. the back end of the, the uh, dresser. Uh, I, and this was more concrete countertops that I did. This was kind of fun doing the coloring and it, it, it turned out a lot rougher, but then I kind of like it. It's almost like kind of a granity roughness. I love the stuff that looks like stone. And then we have the sort of walk in, walk out, shower. <laughs> so. With like pep, like rock from yeah. 
from local? Did you find? Them? There's some like these different oh, colored rocks yeah. are agates from around here. That's cool. Uh, Beautiful. Just played. Yeah. Just kept, you know, like a, a, the shape is whatever you wanted to make it, right? Yeah. It's not like a straight line or. That's really fun. I noticed there's a mossy kind of. The tree that's in the middle of the house. There's so many curves in here. I didn't want a square corner there. So I got, this is moss that they use in floor shops. It's real moss. It's oh. been dried and colored. Oh. And then I took the bark off of some of our firewood and uh, with a hot glue gun and <laughs> just built the tree. And I always joke with people, well, you should see the rest of the tree. <laughs> so you're just inventing as you go. Yeah. Based on like what you can afford and what might make what sense. What we find what, is like, yeah. so we found like the, the stone work here. Yeah. We found a deal on the stone, but it was a lot of broken pieces. There are actually little panels that kind of go together. And originally we were going to do this whole wall. And when I started doing it on the wall, one, I realized it was a lot of work. And two, we didn't have quite enough to finish the whole wall. And we realized having that separation, kind of like a wainscoting, is actually more interesting than if I had done the whole wall um, with stone. And then that gave us enough to kind of add it over here, which ties the two parts of the room together under the bar here. So material first. <laughs> In some cases, yeah. I mean, yeah. finding that window dictated how big that opening was going to be. Awesome. Jeff right. used to work at a map store, so that's where he got these beautiful oh, maps. They are beautiful. I was just looking at them. We actually will move them. Like right now, we have North America over there. Oh. Uh, so. So that. that's the map where you can look really close. And it actually has the next town. Ah, no. 3,000 people. And it's on this map. So the east side gets really wonderful light in, in the morning. And that's why, you know, we really, we did splurge on these windows, getting the arch windows. And I've seen structures like this where they put square windows in an arched area. And it just doesn't make sense to me. So it was definitely worth doing that. Plus it really lets the sun into the house. And, and like, this is an example where you can look up and you can see the spider webs <laughs> and the sky, but there is actually enough of an overhang uh, to block the summer light coming in. And then this is our guest room slash office. <laughs> I just recently retired, so I never had an office at home before, but I do now. So the, again, you put the wall in later, this wall yeah. in later, yeah. based on what you thought you needed or... Right, to fit the bathtub that we decided. And we splurged on the bath. We got a, a thermal hydro massage. So that kind of dictated where this wall was going to go. Yeah, yeah. And then um, this is a feature that I, I'm really proud of. The, the kitchen's on the other side of this wall. And this wall drawer oh. goes under that corner kitchen that is dead space. Wow. So, so that's a, like goes into the kitchen. Yeah. Right. So this gives us a, you know, towel and linen storage and it's easily accessible. And that corner in the kitchen on the other side is would normally be a place that, you know, old dishes go to hide. <laughs> I've really enjoyed taking opportunities of materials. Like, for example, this, this was, I got this door for free. You know, I said, well, let's put in a pocket door. You know, it's like, well, okay, then I've got to frame it in to fit that particular door. It seems like you always have some sort of view or light. <laughs> We've had people say, oh, you must, it's like living in a cave. And as you can see, there's light everywhere in this house. In fact, more light than I, certainly our house that we had in Toledo and most people's houses. There's a sense of openness. And mm -hmm. while at the same time having that, like when you sleep in this house, you feel like you're being cuddled. Mm. Um, and, and that's a really nice feeling. I think because you're <laughs> strategic with windows. You were very yeah. smart about placing them. Yeah. And just by changing, a, a, the original design was a, a, a straight cross. And then when we started thinking about, can, can we just 
eke out a little more southerly on each side. And, and it made building the house more difficult because laying out where these steel beams went into the concrete on a slight curve was a bit of a challenge, but it's so worth it. Just that, that variation of a slight east, southeast, west, southwest ends of the house, I think make a really big difference. A more rebar time for you? <laughs> a lot of rebar. <laughs> a whole lot of rebar. <laughs> These walls are made of this fast wall uh, dry stack building block that, it, that are made from ground up wood pallets and cement. And they're very structural, but in this case, they don't need to be structural because they're not really holding up the roof. Oh. But we wanted that nice thick profile of their, their foot thick and there's insulation in there. So there's a, a good insulation value. We used sections of signage of highway signs and, and construction signs uh, for the forming and the letters all came off. <laughs> what did it say? Construction. Oh, yeah. So I always wanted a root cellar. Okay. And so this is an old septic tank. You can see we've had a really good apple harvest this year. Oh, wow. These are all your apples. Yeah. Oh, it smells good. It, it had been sitting unused for many, many years. I did clean it really well. <laughs> <laughs> I had the outside sprayed with a couple of inches of foam, uh -huh. but I didn't have the bottom sprayed. And then when we incorporated the retaining wall here, then it got encased in concrete. So the coolness of the earth comes up from the bottom to keep it cool. There is a vent at the back end, so in one end and out the other. It was kind of a fun project to create a door that fit, and it gives us a great wine cellar, root cellar. We'll have apples into May or June next year that are stored in here. Wow. No. Since firewood is our only source of heat, so this was one of the best investments I ever made was a hydraulic wood splitter. It uses the hydraulics from our tractor. We used to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Which was, you know, when you're younger, it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do, but there's a point where it's not fun anymore. So this has really been a godsend. And most of the wood we get are trees that fall down during a storm. Yeah. We're getting ready. So this wood that we're putting in here will be for two winters from now. Wow. So it'll have a lot of time to yeah, season. Jeff likes to joke about how many sheds I've built <laughs> <laughs> on the property. I do have a backup solar system, okay. which is a, it's a 10 kilowatt battery system okay. that is maintained and charged by the one solar panel oh, okay. we have on top. But when the power goes out, I, uh, it runs to the house and runs the refrigerator, Starlink, you know, whatever lights or whatever we need. Uh -huh. And then uh, you have a car, your garage. Yeah. So this is G2D2 is her name. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is full, uh, full electric. They're made here in Eugene. And it has a tail. <laughs> and it has, she has a tail. <laughs> this is my main vehicle. I drive it every day and it'll go on the highway. As I was using it for work, hauling mail in the back seat. So. so you brought a pile of um, shells from down so in the water. So the oyster farm is just a hundred feet down the road. Yes. They give that away for free. Once we get rid of this ramp and put the retaining wall on that side, we need a way to get up on the roof for maintenance, cutting the grass. Uh, my plan was to build this kind of ramp up and rather than pay for gravel or more rock, I got that for free. It's going to build a ramp going up and then it's going to turn around and it's going to go up the backside and it's still a work in progress, like much of the house.
And then you see here, like where I'm standing is actually an overhang. Yeah, so you're standing, like if you are not squeamish and oh. promise not to fall. Okay. It's the overhang. It's the overhang down there, yep. Uh-huh, yep. And I see a handprint. Yeah. <laughs> kind of fun, it's so personal. And look what's growing on the side. You actually have more than grass. You have like blackberries? Unfortunately, yes. You so know, when we things take root. So we, when we first buried it, we spread wildflower seeds and oh. it was beautiful for the first like three years because they would come up every year. Yeah. And then the blackberries took hold and, oh. you know, we try to, like, we don't want trees growing on here because you don't want the roots going down okay. in the house. So we're usually pulling up any tree sprouts. There's always something to do though. <laughs> Yeah, the, the blackberries are more prevalent than we'd like them to be. So, do you have, have you calculated cost? Oh boy. I mean, they say it costs like 10% more than a conventional structure, but there was a time I was kind of keeping close track but we've kind of lost and you've also gotten a lot of materials and then yeah. it's yeah. just so like probably hard to say right yeah. and how long did it take because you've done it yourself well, we're, we're still good. working on it but the main part of it <laughs> six seven years wow. yeah i think we were able to move into the bed the guest room there still was not earth on top of the house and then it was still a while yet before we actually buried the house. But the savings in energy costs and low maintenance and longevity of the house more than makes up for it.